What's up YouTube? Have you wondered what is going on with the Affinity programs and what their future might look like? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and what we're here to talk about today is the Affinity Program. So that's Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Publisher, and what their future might look like. This is brought on by a couple of things. First, there is a 50% off sale happening for Affinity right now, which blows my mind because I have told multiple people here on YouTube that I didn't think the 50% off sale would ever happen again. When it happened the two times previously, it was in response to the initial pandemic and then another surge in the pandemic and the lengthy nature of it. So it was really done as a goodwill gesture by Serif, who are the parent company of Affinity. And so I'm very surprised to see it come back. It's this spring sale right now. And I really wonder what that means for the future of Affinity and the future of the company and the future of Affinity pricing. Because Affinity has always been a steal and was $50 for a long time. And then they switched after the last 50% off sale and went to $55 per app. They did about a 10% raise across the board. And I'm wondering if this sale signals that that is not going too well for them. And that kind of the half off price is kind of the sweet spot for actually making sales of the Affinity programs right now. And that's a little bit concerning if people aren't willing to pay even this very small amount, which is $55 for these programs that are actually quite good. But it also is concerning as we look towards development. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Of course, there is a 50% off sale going on right now. So if you haven't picked up the Affinity programs yet and they do look interesting to you, now is probably the best time to do it. I don't think we're going to see better than 50% off sale. Black Friday is traditionally the best sale of the year and that goes to about 30%. The other thing is a comment on my, actually my Vector Styler video from someone named Joshua. And I really like this comment, even though I may not agree with everything in it, but it's a very thoughtful comment. So I'm gonna go ahead and read that to you and pop it up here on screen so that you can see it. And this will kind of lead into our discussion. This is not going to be a tutorial video like most of my videos. It's going to be more of a discussion about where we think this is going. So do feel free to comment down below and add your voice to this discussion. Of course, always be respectful of other people's opinions when you're down in the comments. So what Joshua says is, and this comes from a month or so ago, talking about Vector Styler. Says Vector Styler seems interesting. I'm not switching, but starting to worry if the switch to Affinity was a mistake. So I'm assuming he switched from Adobe, as so many of us have. Affinity, in my opinion, has reached a point where they can't afford to keep putting customers, putting off customers with bug fixes and insignificant feature updates. The hype around Affinity has long since faded. And so I think he's talking about that initial hype, like, oh, there's a program that works uh, like Adobe, but is not from Adobe and single purchase license, right? So he's saying that's kind of faded. And if they don't deliver competitive tools, Affinity success could end just as quickly as it began. That's very common for things that are startups. Although I wouldn't consider Serif a startup because they have a really long history, but Affinity has kind of acted like a startup. And so this kind of flash in the pan thing. We've been going at this for quite a while, more than just a couple of years. So it might not be a flash in the pan, but it, it could end quickly is what he's saying. And he could be right about that. The development cycle of Affinity was already poor back then, but customer requests were at least implemented. But now it has become so slow and quiet that rumors are now circulating that development has more or less stopped because Affinity is probably just hoping to be bought by a larger company. That seems unlikely to me. Um, Serif it has a long track record, like I said. So I don't think Serif is looking to get bought up or sold. I mean, that can always happen. We see huge mergers happen, much larger mergers than would it be involved if Serif got bought up. Serif really operates, um, from what I can find online, between like 250 and 300 employees probably. Um, so it wouldn't be a huge merger, but they have this long track record. So it doesn't seem like they're just in it for a quick rise, quick sale type of thing, but you never know. In Affinity's forum, you can also tell that Serif thinks they know better what customers need and don't need. This is a big mistake in my opinion. I don't think Joshua is alone here in having these concerns. I think they're very real. I mean, I understand that companies have the freedom to decide and choose what they want to work on and how and when they want to release their products. However, if you have started to make a lot of promises and make big speeches, you are obliged to live up to these promises. I think that's very true. Uh, I think he's right on there. What Affinity really lacks are tools such as the image tracing tool, shape creation tool, blend tool, 3D text, extrusion capabilities, and most importantly, support 
for native third-party plugins and add-ons. Besides Illustrator, I'm aware of three to four different vector app tools that have shape creation tools. I'm not sure exactly what he means by shape creation tools. Pretty much every vector app has shape creation tools. He might mean a shape builder tool. I'm only aware of um, Illustrator and Vector Styler that have the shape builder tool built in, but I don't know everything. So there might be others out there that um, he's aware of. So this goes back to different tools. We've talked a lot about this. So I'm not going to rehash every tool that if any doesn't have that Illustrator does have. I'm not going to rehash all of that here. We've gone over it a lot on this channel, but there is this sense, I think, that Affinity needs to produce some new tools. And the newest tool that they've produced is the Contour tool. Of course, new tools should be released if there's going to be a 2.0 release, which is kind of what we're waiting on. Unfortunately, I have the impression that we can't expect much more from Affinity in the future. On top of that, Affinity refuses to become more platform independent. They became too fond of Apple, and if Windows didn't have such a large market share, they would prefer to release their products only for Apple if they could. I mean, granted, Serif isn't Adobe, and they don't have the same financial resources as the big tech companies, but they are in control of how they want to run their business, and in the long run, and they also have a wealth of customer data to draw on. Now, I both agree and disagree with some of these points in here. I don't think that Serif is anti-Windows. They definitely released their earlier products for Windows and then made the Affinity products for Mac first, but it didn't take them too long in terms of a development cycle to be able to bring Affinity Photo and then Affinity Designer to the PC. And so I don't know, it, it's really in the mobile space that they seem to be focused on the iPad and that's not abnormal at all. Most mobile apps focus on the iPad because that is where all the money is. It's not very helpful for them to want to develop onto something like an Android tablet or something like that. And um, programs seem to be roughly equivalent on PC and on Mac. So I'm not sure where that's coming from exactly, but there definitely was a reliance on Mac early on. So that part is definitely true, that they definitely relied on Mac. I don't think that's too weird though, because most creators use Macs. It's just kind of Macs dominate the creative industry. So it's not weird to try and focus on that market. First, especially if you're going for independent creators who aren't part of a big company, which is where Affinity seems to be focused, right? These independent solo creators, not part of a big company who are just all using the same PC kind of thing. So that's my two cents on that. Oh, and this, the, the point about them being much smaller than Adobe, yeah, they are astronomically smaller than Adobe. Adobe has something like 26,000 employees um, and Affinity has something like 250. So like, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're, they're not even in the same playing field at all in terms of number of employees. Now Adobe supports tons, tons more products than Affinity does, like astronomically more products too. So. We compare them because their tools are similar, but the companies are not similar at all. They aren't even they aren't even in the same arenas when it comes to the two companies, the size of the companies, their market caps, anything like that. Then it goes on, he says, so far I'm still rooting for Affinity. My prediction is that in the next major if the next major release doesn't include at least a few of the desired competitive tools that customers have been waiting for, then Affinity will have lost the trust and patience of many customers for many years to come. Affinity will continue to be used by many but young enterprise customers will then think twice about relying on Affinity apps for the long term. If that happens, I fear that other software companies will see this as an opportunity to shake up the market. I expect much more from a company that wants to present itself as an alternative to Adobe. If you can't do that, you should communicate that clearly to the customers so that expectations can be adjusted to reality. Okay, so I think that this point is really important. It really comes down to 2.0. If Affinity 2.0 comes out this year, and it has some of these features that people really want, right? Like I'm talking Shape Builder in Affinity Designer, I'm talking footnotes and right to left text in Affinity Publisher, and some maybe more AI elements inside of Affinity Photo, then we can really see where they're going, right? What direction they're going in and how they wanna do product releases. We've never had a second product release cycle with Affinity, so we don't really know at all how that's gonna go yet. So that's critical. If that doesn't happen this year, I think he has some good points. I think that we're probably looking at maybe other players wanting to enter the market, which is not a bad thing, right? Like it's better to have more choices. We want more choices with better interoperability. Um, so if that happens, I'm not going to be upset about that. I will be upset if Affinity just kind of abandons their customers because I do think they have a lot of potential. And I'm like Joshua here, I am rooting 
for them to be able to do well. I want them to do well. And I think he does too, right? We, we may have some different viewpoints on it, but I think we both want it to go well. And I really appreciate the way that he's written something that's clearly been well thought out. He's not just out here making a comment um, to be rude or anything. He's very respectful. He's thinking it out and more people should be commenting like this on YouTube. I have really good commenters. So as a general rule, my comment sections are pretty good, but that's not case, case in all of YouTube. The one thing that I'm that I'm going to kind of disagree with here, but not completely, is presenting itself as an alternative to Adobe. I think that Affinity does present themselves as an alternative to Adobe, but not a complete alternative to Adobe, right? They are not going after the complete Creative Cloud. They haven't released a Lightroom competitor, they haven't released a Premiere competitor, an After Effects competitor. A lot of people would like them to, but they haven't. And so I don't think that they are billing themselves as like someone who's going to take over and destroy Adobe, right? But they are, like he says, an alternative to Adobe. And I think that those of us like on YouTube and the internet have done more to promote them as an alternative to Adobe than maybe even they themselves do, right? They, they don't generally go out and try to target Adobe specifically, right? They aren't like Samsung targeting Apple with like direct competitor trying to like make fun of the other company or anything like that. I think that Affinity wants to make the creative space better and so naturally they are doing things differently than Adobe does, right? They think that the software pricing model should be different. They have different viewpoints than Adobe, but I don't know that they necessarily see themselves as head-to-head -head competitors, right? Adobe's in a lot of different pies. Affinity's really in one focused pie. So it's a little bit different there, a little bit more nuanced. So I've kind of tried to unpack this my feelings about the things that are brought up in this comment. I would love to hear your thoughts about these below. Of course, please keep it respectful just the way Joshua did in that initial comment. And let's kind of talk about what we think is going to happen in the future. Um, and this isn't about being an Illustrator fanboy or an Affinity fanboy or anything like that. It's really about looking at Affinity and Serif as a company and thinking about where they are headed and what's going to happen. And what this 50% off sale means. Does it really mean? Because I don't think they intended to go 50% off again. I, I don't think that was the intention when they raised prices. So you can get them right now for about $27 a piece. Um, they went more than 50% off down to $9.99 um, for the iPad apps, which is a great deal. I mean, you should go down and get it because even if Affinity doesn't keep working, you own the program and you can keep using it until you can't anymore, right? So you've at least got a couple of years left to use it even if there was something terrible that happened, which I don't think Affinity is suddenly going to fold and go under. That seems very unlikely at this point. Serif is an established company with a long track record. But what does this mean? What, what direction are they headed in? How are things going to evolve? And do they just not have the pricing right? It's hard to compete without a subscription now. Now, obviously that's what those of us using Affinity want. We don't want a subscription. That's why we're here. But it is hard to compete with the constant development costs that occur to a software company. And so where's kind of their their new revenue going to come from? They need to release 2.0 so that they can generate new revenue, right? So I want to know your thoughts on this. Those are kind of my thoughts. Of course, they're, they're a little bit scattered. My hope is that we'll see an awesome 2.0 release sometime around the fall um, because 1.10 came out in August of last year. And so I would like to think that um, towards the end of summer, beginning of fall, we'll have a 2.0 release, which should be a new purchase for those of us who already own the software, but maybe with a discount or something like that, so that we can get 2.0 with a really powerful release, some great new features, um, some new workflow setups, and we can really see this start to take off. And maybe they're just trying to garner a bunch of new users before they do that with a 50% off sale. I don't know. Like I said, you should go um, comment and of course pick these up if, they're, if you're interested in these apps. And if you are learning these apps, remember I've got a bunch of courses on Skillshare that are linked in the description of this video so that you can get up and running on some of these alternative apps. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.